Hello, my fourth grade friends. Today we are continuing the first lesson of unit three. So earlier we talked about the letter. Hopefully you gave that to your parents already. Um, and then we talked about how division looks, the different vocabulary for it. You can still use uh, factor and product, and most of the time we'll know what you're talking about, but you need to know that the quotient is the answer for the division problem. The divisor is the thing that is doing the dividing of the dividend, the number that's getting divided. So um, you can always use your math facts for multiplication to help you solve those problems. It's really important. And we also talked about remainders, which is basically the leftovers. So not every um, question that you're going to come across is going to be a perfect math fact that you've memorized for multiplication. So you've got to use your math fact to figure out how close you are and then how many are left over that won't fit in a full group. Then we practice that um, and make sure whenever you're doing this that your remainder is not bigger than your divisor. Because if it is bigger than the divisor, then you could have made a whole other group. Whole other group, I should say. So we're going to continue with that. We're going to talk about multiplying and dividing with lots of zeros. We've spent a lot of time uh, learning about place value. And that's really helpful because you can apply your knowledge of um, multiplying single digit things even if you're multiplying something that is in the tens, hundreds, or thousands, or beyond place. Um, so that's really neat. Let's take a look. What pattern do you notice when you multiply with zeros? If you multiply like four times 1,000, you get 4,000. If you multiply seven times 5,000, you get 35,000. Seven times 500 is 3,500. So the the only thing that changes in the result is really the place value, right? So here, instead of just 35, it's 3,500 because you multiply 500. So the change in the product matches the change in the factors place value. Oop. Okay, what pattern do you notice when you divide with zeros? So it's kind of, take, take a look, 35 divided by 7 is 5. 350 divided by 7 is 50. 35 tens divided by 7 is 5 tens. 3500 divided by 7 is 500. 35,000 divided by 7 is 5,000. So the change, let's practice using that fancy vocabulary. What's the answer in a division problem again? It's a quotient, right? So the change in the place value of the quotient reflex the place value, what do you call the thing that's getting divided? The dividend, right? Of the dividend. All right, so let's go ahead and use that along with the math facts that we've been practicing to solve these problems. So. Uh, four, or 30, 32 tens, or 320, divided by 4. Well, I want you to think about 4 times what equals 32. 4 times what is 32? 8. So how, how are you going to get 32 tens? You need 8 tens, so 80. Next one. Six times, or six, whew, 420, or 42 tens, divided by six. So let's think six times what equals just 42. Six times what is 42? Seven. So if six times seven is 42, how many, like what is the place value needed to get uh, six times what? 
is 42 tenths instead of just 42. Seven tenths or 70, right? And you'll notice I'm lining the place value up here carefully, lining up my ones with my ones and my tens with my tens. Seven goes into 49 how many times? Or 49 divided by seven is what? Well, this one, if you've memorized your math facts, you know already it's a single digit one, so seven times seven. So we'll just put our seven up there. All right, 1,800. Three times what is 18? Three times six is 18. So how do you get that 100? 600, right? Okay. 4,500 divided by five. Five times what is 4,500? Five times what is 45? We're just going to multiply it by 100, right? So five times what is 45? Nine. So times that by 100, 900. 4,500 divided by five is 900, right? Okay, here we go. 3,600 divided by nine. Nine times what is 36? And then to get to 3,600, we'll times that by 100. So nine times what is 36? Four, so times that by 100 to get 3,600, and we have 400, 400. So all that time you spent practicing your math facts is really going to pay off, don't you think? Okay, now this one looks a little bit tricky, because if we're following that pattern from earlier, we might try to do thirty or 6 times what equals 3. And then you might be a little stumped. What do you think we should do here? Maybe move it out one place value. So rather than 3,000, we could do 30. Is there a math fact we know that six times something is 30? I think so, it's five, right? So to get from 3,000 to, or from 30 to 3,000, it's multiplied by 100, like 30 hundred, which sounds very weird. That's why no one says it. 500. Okay. Let's apply that same idea over here. I want you to give it a shot. Should we do five times something equals four? Hmm, probably not. What should we do? 40. What goes there? Eight. Now we're doing 40 hundred, so 800. Look at you. Look at all that division we did. Nice job. Okay, turn that page. And here we go. Now we're going to take that same idea and we're going to have remainders involved. And it's not anything crazy. We just did it. So let's look at our example. So 7 goes into 2106. How many times? Well, we did 300 for the 2100. And we subtracted, found that difference, and now we have 6 as the remainder. Okay. 8 goes into 643 how many times? Well, 8 goes into 640 80 times, right? Because 640 is 64 tens, so it's just 8 tens. 640, line that up, subtract. We end up having 3 left over, so we say remainder 3. 9 goes into... 20, uh, 275, how many times? Well, we can make 27 tens, right, which is 270. How do we get 27 tens? Multiply 9 by 3 tens. 270, subtract 5, remainder 5. All right, let's look at this one. Uh, 1,601 divided by two. Well, 16 is two times what? Eight. So 1,600 would lead us to 800, right? 
And then we'll subtract that. We'll have that one left over. So 800 remainder one. We're always looking to see if our remainder is bigger than our divisor. And if it is, we have to adjust, right? But it isn't in this case. <sighs> okay. Uh, three goes into 1,802 how many times? Three goes into 18, or the three times, what is 18? Six. So 1,800 would be 600. So put six in the hundreds place, 18 over here. Subtract, you just have two left over, so remainder two, 600 remainder two. Four goes into 2,803, how many times? Well, four times what is 28? Four times seven is 28. So four times what is 2,800? That has to be 700. 2,800, subtract, you got three left over, remainder three. Try these two on your own, see how you do. Pause and play when you're ready to hear what I have to say. 4,503 divided by five. Well, 45 divided by five, or five times what is 45? Five times nine is 45, so five times 900 would be 4,500. So 900 remainder three. 4,205 divided by six. Well, six times what is 42? Six times seven is 42. So six times what is 4,200? Six times 700 is 4,200. Four, two, zero, zero, minus you have five left over, remainder five. Okay, so keep using those math facts. You're also welcome to draw pictures um, to check your answer with any of these, you would just do 700 times 6, that's uh, 4,200, and then you'd add that remainder. Remember, it didn't fit in a group, so it's 4,205. And if it's the same, then you did it. Good job, but we're kind of, by using our math multiplication facts, we're kind of checking our answer while we're doing it, right? All right, my darlings, uh, thanks for joining me, and I'll catch you next time. Check and see if you have an assignment. This is Mrs. Smith, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.